I'm really pleased to introduce you to this spectacular panel on learning and systems change for innovative community funding models. It's going to be led today by Bryony Rogers from Fire to Flourish. We've really um, lent into participatory granting. And for us, what we've meant by that is looking to shift those power dynamics, making sure that everyone who's involved and impacted by the decisions of each round has a chance to weigh in and ultimately even decide which projects are funding. Most recently, we've had rounds as large as 1.2 million with community given full ownership of where that funding is getting to go, which is pretty exciting. I also think that the nature of um, everyone being around the table and having that democratic processes like a, a community vote um, or a secret ballot or, um, you know, a, a conversation in with those people in the room and their voices being heard and being, um, I think, the sort of the research side of it is really about the process and really sharing that information back to community. So they see evidence of, oh, okay, well, 80% of people voted for that project. Fair enough. My one didn't get up you know, what's going on there. One of the other things that I think we've seen repeatedly is by bringing people together, not only are they making space for funding for other projects, we're actually seeing people who have very similar ideas, who didn't realize they had very similar ideas, coming together and creating collaborations and expanding on those ideas. So getting projects that you never would have gotten if people just threw an application in independently and didn't realize that two seats down, Cara and I are, are speaking the same language, looking to do the same thing and are now competing when we could really come together. Sam, what did it mean for you as an organization to work? Was this, did you have to set things up differently? It must have been challenging, you know, to kind of get the governance right for this. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was challenging, not as challenging as it was in the community though. Um, Definitely, I had sleepless nights about whether it was legal. Where um, my uh, pro bono lawyer was on on speed dial constantly, um, but I think again because I guess normal normal structuring and governance is quite hierarchical, uh, which rightly so. You know, we we'll start here, we'll go up, be assessed, come back down. But what we were able to do is it was this uh, delayed uh, structure, so community with talking, making their decisions. Uh, Monash and the Fire to Flourish team were making their decisions. We were doing our work and it was all happening concurrently. And so the governance was still there, very much so. I can't think of anything more robust than, hey, is that real? Yeah, okay. Like that's a very good structure for diligence on a grant. I think our challenge going forward is to share with other people the processes we've been through and to help I keep identifying with government these barriers to recovery, barriers to community-led recovery, the barriers to delivering these projects, even when the government said, well, here's a bag of money, go for it. And that's where we need to get to. We need to build big pools, social infrastructure, community capital in each place-based each place -based location, and then that can be the mechanism. And it's all about the impact and the engagement of the community not the funder requirements. Mm -hmm.